This is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing. We're so glad in it. Welcome to the online worship experience of Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, right here in Memphis, Tennessee. We are so excited to have you streaming our online worship experience as we're bringing God's house into your house on today. If you're streaming via Facebook Live, if you don't mind, would you like and then start a watch party or share our stream today? And if you're viewing through YouTube, make sure you're clicking that bell and becoming a subscriber subscriber to the Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church YouTube page on today on our YouTube channel. And so we're excited about what God is going to do. If you are streaming from somewhere outside of Memphis, would you comment into the comment section where you're streaming from on today? It's going to be an awesome time in worship. So let's get ready. We're getting ready to be led in worship by our worship team. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Are you glad to be in worship today with us? I was glad when they said unto me. Come on, clap those hands. Come on, if you're at home, put those hands together right there. Come on, come on. I was I'm glad to be in the service one more time. I'm glad to be in the service. What about you? Come on, sing it. I was glad. I'm glad to be in the service. One more time of life. One more time. So glad. So glad to be in the service. One more time. We are so glad to be here. God has been gracious to us. So glad. So glad to be in the service. One more time. Oh, that's just for he did. Didn't have to let me live. Didn't have to let me live. Celebrate today. We give God glory and honor because He's the King of Kings. He's given us life. Come on. I'm glad to be. I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. Yeah. Come on. I'm glad to be. I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. Come on, everybody. So glad. So glad. to be in the service. Come on, everybody, so glad. So glad to be in the service one more time. For he didn't have to. For he didn't have to. Didn't have to let me live. Didn't have to let me live. Didn't have to let me live. So glad to be. So glad to be in the service one more time. One more time. For he didn't. Didn't have to let me live. Didn't have to let me live. Didn't have to let me live. So glad to be in the service. One more. One more time. Four. 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 He didn't have to. Didn't have to let me live. Didn't have to let me live. Didn't have to. Didn't have to let me live. of God's goodness. Would you clap your hands? Now listen, follow me. Come on, say, I'm, I'm glad. So glad. I'm glad to be here. Come on. I'm glad. So glad. I'm glad to be here. In the same. I'm glad. I'm so glad. So glad to be here. One more time. One more time. One more time. One more 
one more time we give him glory and honor for all that he has done in the midst of this pandemic we continue to say that he's God we thank him for being God I want you to take this time and moment just to lift those hands wherever you are and worship him and thank him for being God for redeeming and setting you free and because and because he's God Shh, way down singer sing with me when I come into his presence I humble
just begin to worship him. Just begin to worship him. Oh, we give you glory. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Because you're God. Everybody just worship him. We give you praise. Thank you, God. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you praise. Then sings my soul. My Savior God to thee. <laughs> How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul. To thee. Lift those hands wherever you are. How great thou art. How great thou art. Hello, Boulevard family. It's time for prayer. You can join me in this moment by typing your prayer requests in the comment section. Let's go to God together. Gracious and everlasting God, we come in this moment confessing that this season has been hard. There have been many hard nights and rough days, and yet we still dare to sing how great thou art. For you have never failed us, and we know that you never will. Our hearts are overcome with gratitude this day. For you continue to give us breath in our lungs, the activity of our limbs, and a sound mind. And even in this moment, we remember all those who are afflicted with COVID-19, who struggle to breathe, all those who are afflicted in the body, all those who are suffering with illnesses of every kind. God, be a healer. Be a healer bringing together broken bodies. Be a healer in the ICU. Be a healer, oh God, for all your children. God, we thank you that you have continued to provide in the midst of this crisis, that you have continued to put food on our tables and clothes on our back, that you've given us the resources necessary to meet our daily needs. And yet we pause right now to call to mind every single person who is unemployed, everyone who faces job insecurity, everyone who does not know where their next meal is coming from, where their next check is coming from, each and every person who was uncertain about what the next day and the next month and the days ahead hold for them. God, you said you would be Jehovah Jireh, and we ask you to be a provider right now. Sustain us with your mighty hand and keep us through this pandemic. We know that you can, God. Even in the midst of the uncertainty that we face, we know that you can, and so we thank you for the gift of hope. We thank you for joy. We thank you for a peace that surpasses all understanding. And we ask that for each and every person who grieves, for each person who has lost their hope or finds their faith slipping, that you would be near to them. Be a comforting mother, be a caring father, be a ever present help. Hold them in the palm of your hand. Remind them of who they are and to who they belong. God, we ask you these things because you've done it all before. And we know that you can and you will do it again. And so, oh God, we ask that that might be our testimony that after this season is over, after we've run this leg of the race, we might be able to testify to one another that God did it again, that you healed again, that you showed up again, that you provided again. God, may our testimony be that you did it again. And until such time, 
we will be mindful to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, my brothers and sisters, it's this time in our worship where we worship God through our giving. We honor God's word, and so our giving is an act of obedience. But it is also, most importantly, an act of worship in which we display our trust in God, where we affirm that God is the source of all that we have. And I want to take a moment and thank you, Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church, and as well our partners who are streaming from all around the world for what you have given during this critical time. It's really making a difference in so many persons' lives. We've really been on the cusp of food insecurity that as you have given, we've been able to serve the over 900 households who are receiving food from Mount Outreach. We've been able to give an average of 35 emergency food boxes on the days in which we distribute them. And then as well, we've been able to continue to love without limits as we've been a blessing to our Boulevard member-owned restaurants, as well as been a blessing to those who are our seniors who live in Memphis Towers and Poston Housing, as well as those who are on the front lines at Methodist South and Methodist University, as we as well have blessed those at the Child Advocacy Center with meals that have been prepared by Boulevard member-owned restaurants. So I want you to know today, members, those of you who are partners, who are viewing on today, that your gifts, your generosity are making a difference here in the city of Memphis and even around the world. As we prepare to give, I want you to know that there are a number of ways you can give electronically or through mail. You can give through push pay, you can give through PayPal, even give through Cash App. Make sure you place in the memo section your first and last name as well as your address. And then you as well can give by mailing your contribution to 70 North Bellevue Boulevard, Memphis, Tennessee, 38104. As you get that gift ready, I want you to bow your heads with me in a word of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you because we know that all that we have has come from you. And so it is in this moment of worship that we offer back to you just a portion of what you have blessed us with. And we pray that as we give, not only will the needs of your storehouse be taken care of, but we pray that these gifts will make a difference in the lives of the people and the city that so desperately need it. We're asking all of these things through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I want you to go ahead and give in these moments. As the Lord has prospered you, let's honor God's word today. Please. 
departments. Healing in the hospital, Lord. We need healing, Lord. Heal our nation, Lord. Heal the government. Healing in the White House. Heal the White House, Lord. We need. familiar passage of scripture I want to invite your attention to as the Lord has laid it upon my heart to share with you on this day. I want you to meet me in Romans chapter 8 verses 28 and 29. Now you know I can't hear your amens but I still want you to interact with our sermon on today. Just comment in the comment section there on YouTube and on Facebook live. Let's go to the Word of God, Romans chapter 8, verse 28 and 29 in the English Standard Version. It reads like this, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose. For those whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, in order that He might be the firstborn among many brothers. I want to raise the question today, is there any good in this? If you have any level of engagement with the church, you have heard someone say to someone else in a moment of crisis or confusion, the words of Romans 8 and 28, and we know all things work together for the good of them that love God to those who are called according to his purpose. Perhaps you've ran to this verse in the past couple of months as we've tried to sort out for ourselves what's happening in our world 
and attempt to decipher where God is in the midst of so much that seems to be going wrong. Think about it, millions infected by a dreaded novel virus and possibly millions more who are asymptomatic, tens of thousands of people dead, tens of millions of people out of work and hungry, incompetent, insufficient, and immoral leadership from the federal level. And even while there is a rush to reopen America, there is no safe way of doing so without a vaccination or even a proven treatment. It's clear that there is a whole lot of bad and if we're honest, there are days we don't want to hear some cheap cliche because we're honestly asking, is there any good in this? If you would permit me for a few moments to allow Paul to take the witness stand and respond to this question, he would simply answer this question with the words he wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in the letter to the Church of Rome as he is speaking to how we as believers can face the suffering of life with courage, confidence, and conviction when he says, we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. Because if we take these words and the words of the verse that follow seriously, we will discover that there is good in the face of so much bad that's happening around us. First of all, part of the good that's coming out of this verse is that God is at work. Listen to the beginning of verse 28 again. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. And as simple as it sounds, it is important that we do not make all things the subject of this statement. And I think one of the clearest translations of this verse is in the NIV that says, and we know that in all things God works. Now this is not to give any one of us a pass in handling what we can clearly do for ourselves and it is not exempting us from being responsible, but it is important for us to know in the turbulence of life that when we come to our limitations and above and beyond the rulers and principalities of this world, we have a God who is at work. God doesn't sit on the sidelines of our lives or a crisis like this and just allow what has happened to us to work itself out. The bad and the good just don't cancel each other out by themselves and God does not leave the outcomes of our lives to chance. No, God is at work, working all things together for good. I don't know that some cynical person is asking the question, if this is true, that God is at work in all things, what's taking God so long? This person is raising the issue of timing and I would venture to say that timing does not negate the fact that God is at work. Because if you read the entirety of scripture, it would testify that God is not confined by our conception of time. That's why Psalm 90 says, for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past. As a matter of fact, God can show up ahead of time, in time, or in overtime, and God can still be at work in this situation we find ourselves in. Can I prove it to you? He showed up 600 years before the flood and told Noah to build an ark that saved Noah, his family, and animal life. That's God working ahead of time. And there are moments where God works in time. Israel was at the Red Sea with Pharaoh's army approaching with the intent of making Israel slaves all over again and with the lifting of a staff and a strong east wind, the waters of the Red Sea opened and the people walked across as if it was dry ground. That's God working in time. Then God works over time. Remember when Mary and Martha sent word to Jesus that Lazarus was sick and near death Jesus stayed where he was for a few more days and when he finally arrived at Bethany, Lazarus had been dead for four days. But Jesus still called Lazarus forth from the dead. That's God working overtime. In each instance, God was at work regardless of the time in which God worked. The songwriter penned these words, you can't hurry God. No, you just have to wait. You have to trust him and give him time no matter how long it takes. He's a God you can't hurry. You don't have to worry. He may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. We must know that God is at work and that even if he hasn't worked in our time frame, God is still in the process. And if we believe that God is, we know that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Maybe there are those of us who need to be reminded that no matter how bad this situation might become, God is still on the job. God has not called out sick, nor has God delegated his responsibilities to anyone else. God is at work. The psalmist suggests that God works all shifts because he doesn't sleep or slumber. Even when we lose sleep, pace the floor, pull our hair out, 
or when tears stain our pillows, God is not absent without leave. On the contrary, God is still on the throne. He sits high and looks low and he's with us, bearing our griefs and taking away our sorrows. God is not only at work, but God is working for us. Paul says two qualifying things in the ESV. First, he writes, we know that for those who love God, then he says, for those who are called according to his purpose. These expressions are important because when we typically come across this verse, we only look at it for its temporal value, but do not also see the eternal vision God has for us. Yes, in this life, we can be able to look at what has transpired in our lives and be able to see that although evil was meant against us, God worked it out for good. But also when we speak of those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose, this is speaking of those who have put their faith, hope, and trust in him. And I believe this suggests a few things for us to consider. First, it suggests that those who love God and who are called according to his purpose do not get a pass when it comes to going through suffering. One of the guarantees that Jesus gives us in John 16 is that in this life you will have tribulation. But the second thing that comes behind this reality for those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose is that when we encounter suffering and sickness, trials and tribulations, God is working on our behalf in all of these things. When you read Romans 8 in entirety, it appears that it is peppered with phrases that let us know that God is at work for us, even when the odds are stacked against us. Just before we get to verse 28, we learn that God is at work when we come to moments when we need to pray but can't find the words to pray. We discover that the Holy Spirit is interceding for us with groans that are too deep for words. Then later in this chapter, the rhetorical question is asked, if God be for us, who can be against us? You and I have to trust in these moments that God is not only working, but that God is with us and working for us. And watch this, here's the last thing. God is working for our good. I need to make it clear, Romans 8 and 28 does not say that everything that happens in our lives will be good. That is a statement that's not even substantiated by scripture, nor proven by anyone's life circumstances. Further, let me suggest that this is not some mental ascent where we render that which is at its core bad as something that is good. Let me be clear, coronavirus is bad, homicide is bad, cancer is bad, death and unemployment are bad, but God has a way of bringing the best out of us even in the worst of situations. So the question that needs to be asked is, what is the good? If you wanna know the good, you can't just shout yourself off verse 28. Keep reading to verse 29 where it says, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Now, this is already a rich theological verse as it raises the concept of foreknowledge and being predestined. But I want us to see that the goal or the good is that we're conformed to the image of God's son, Jesus Christ. So the suffering that we endure does not bring God any pleasure, but God is working with it to help us resemble our elder brother, Jesus Christ. And I like the way one writer put it when he suggested God has a master design of what believers ought to look like, which is the image of his son, Jesus Christ. And where all things might not be convenient or comfortable, they are conforming us to look like and have a heart like and have character like Jesus. God uses the circumstances of our lives to shape and mold and contour and smooth us out so that we look more like Jesus. Because at the end of it all, when our faith becomes sight and we make it to glory, we will realize that the words of the Apostle Paul is true, that it does not yet appear what we shall be, but when we shall see him, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Brothers and sisters, we have to trust in that in the midst of so much bad that we wake up to each morning on the news that there is good news and that out of this God is making us stronger, wiser, better, and more like Jesus. It's been said that the relationship between a movie actor and a director can make or break a movie. A USA Today movie critic wrote, in some director's hands, an actor resembles a lump of coal in others the performer metamorphosizes into a shining diamond on screen. So the question is asked, what is the key to a consistently winning pair? A professor of cinematography 
said that it is only about one thing, trust. A director must trust that an actor has the character inside of him or her that is pulling the actor's reins, that an actor must trust a director with his performance, his work, and his image on screen. And that is the same kind of trust that we have to have with the writer and director of our lives. We have to trust that we know how, he knows how to bring the best out of us and develop our character so that it brings out good in God's glory. And I challenge you to trust that God is not only working, but that God is working all things together for good. So this week, each day, I want you to take a moment and write down or even post to social media some good that you're able to see in the midst of so much bad. If that is you having a greater appreciation of our healthcare workers and first responders, if that is being able to spend more time with your spouse and your family than ever before, if that is seeing people across races and ethnicities volunteering and working together to serve the community, write it down, post it, let the world know all is not bad. God can bring good out of the worst situations of life. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That on Good Friday, we saw the worst of humanity when Jesus bore our sins on the cross, when he suffered in our place, he died, was laid in a tomb, and things looked real bad. But we know that's not how the story ends. On the third day, on that Sunday morning, Jesus got up from the grave. And oh, what hope his resurrection gives us. That in the worst moments of life, God is able to bring good and good news out of it. So I want to invite you in this moment to accept the greatest gift that the world has ever received which is to be in a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. If you are willing to believe that Jesus died for your sins and that he rose from the dead, if you're willing to confess your sins, to repent and turn from your sinful ways, you can have eternal life. And if you want to respond to that invitation for eternal life through Christ Jesus, please in this moment send an email to connect at the boulevard.org. We would be excited to introduce you to a relationship with Jesus Christ. But possibly you've been streaming our services for the past number of weeks. And the Lord is impressing upon you to connect with Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church Disciples of Christ. We would love to have you as part of our church family to join us in what God is doing through us. I would love to be your pastor. And I want you to do the same thing. Send an email to connect at the boulevard.org. And if you do that, our staff will be in touch with you immediately concerning the decision that you have made to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and become part of this body of believers at Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. Well, my brothers and my sisters, I hope and pray you were blessed by this time of online worship as we brought God's house to your house. I hope that you will invite others to share with us on next week. We'll be right back here, same place and same times, 1030 a.m. and 4 p.m. where we're going to be praising God and we're going to be sharing the good news. And there's somebody who needs to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, somebody who needs to be inspired to keep pressing on in these times. And then I want to encourage you to stay connected to us on Facebook, on Instagram, and Twitter to check out our website for a host of activities that are happening in the life of our church. And lastly, if you're not on our email list where you can get real-time communications from our church, send an email to info at the boulevard.org, info at the boulevard.org. We'll get you on that list so that you can get the official communications that are coming from our church. Brothers and sisters, as we come to the end of this time, I want you to know we're praying for you. We pray that God will continue to cover you and to keep you from being infected by this plague. And I pray that we would be responsible, that we would not go out if we don't have to, that we would practice physical distancing, that we would wash our hands, and that we would make sure when we do have to go out, we're wearing a mask. And I know God is going to bless us and keep us and bring us to that point where it is safe for us to gather back together again as a church family. 
Until then, let me bless you in this way as we come to the close of this time and our worship team is gonna come and give us some inspiration as we start the rest of our week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace in your uprising and in your down sitting and your going out and in your coming in and your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter, even in your tears until that day we shall stand at the feet of Jesus. We go in love, we go in joy, and we go in peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Have an awesome week. Fathers play such a huge role in the Boulevard family. 
and we want to celebrate them this coming Father's Day. Let's show them some love. Send in your 30-second Father's Day tribute to the dad or father figure in your life to media at theboulevard.org by June 5th. Let them know what an awesome job they're doing and how much we appreciate them. Don't forget to register for Right Now Media, our digital resource library for life groups. Simply text Right Now The Boulevard to 41411 or use the web link in eNews to gain access to thousands of free studies for your group. The Boulevard Scholarship Drive is still going strong. Last year, over $94,000 was raised, and we want to continue to help make a way for our children's future. Your donation will help pave the way to academic achievement for our high school grads. All donations are due no later than May 31st. Donate today. Hey kids, it's almost vacation Bible school time. And you know what? VBS is coming to you live from the World Wide Web. That's right. From the comfort of your home, you can become a Knight of the North Castle and armor up with truth, justice, peace, faith, and salvation. To register, see the link in the e-news. Parents, Miss Ty will need your assistance by picking up a kit for each of your children. You may do so on Friday, June 12th, from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. at the Midtown Campus, or Saturday, 10.30 a.m. to 12 noon at the Southwind Campus. Calling all children, kindergarten through the fifth grade, Join us for Disciple Town Virtual Worship every Sunday at 12.30 p.m. using the link in eNews. All middle, high school, and college students are encouraged to tune in every Sunday at 12 p.m. for the Nexus Pod, Place of Discipleship. It's going down on Instagram Live, so follow at Nexus Boulevard Youth today. And speaking of worship, don't forget that you have two opportunities to worship with us. Join us every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. on Facebook Live or on YouTube as we make a joyful noise across the airwaves and into homes around the world. Invite people to join you for virtual service through a watch party. Download and share the graphic in the e-news and use the hashtag Hashtag Boulevard Connect so people can join in on this awesome experience. The church building may be closed, but the boulevard is still living out the gospel of Jesus Christ because of your giving. Last month, we were able to provide over 29,000 meals to those in need. We were also able to provide over 1,000 ready-made meals for some of our seniors in assisted living facilities and to frontline medical workers as they tirelessly work to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. This wouldn't be possible without you. There are multiple ways to give. Text Boulevard Midtown to 77977, Cash App Mississippi Boulevard, PayPal, or by mail. Your giving makes the difference. Tomorrow, Monday, May 25th, is Memorial Day. And guess what? The church offices are closed. So relax, enjoy this day off, and we will see you on Tuesday. Keep up with all the latest happenings and updates via the weekly e-news and our social media post on Facebook and Instagram. Use the hashtag Boulevard Connect as you're watching from home. Show us your worship space. Take a picture of your family at church. Share how you are using the devotionals and more. Let's stay connected.